A new viral survey has ranked the best and the worst countries for expats to move to, live, and work in. David, let's see where all the Asian countries fall and which ones surprise us. Yeah, this went viral. It's called Expat Nations 2023. It ranked the cost of living, availability of housing, career prospects, social life, quality of medical care, and, and some of the uh, answers were surprising. Mexico came in at number one. Ooh. I don't think that's surprising in 2023. Everybody's going to Tulum. Everybody's going to CDMX. Mm -hmm. Again, the top. A lot of people speak English nowadays out there. However, and the Asian countries that ranked in the top 10 and went Malaysia, Taiwan, Thailand, Philippines, and ranking near the bottom of the list was actually Japan at 44 and South Korea at number 50. Wow. So those are surprising because in the Asian American world, you're thinking about the soft power, the coolness, all the media consumption. Those would be like two of the top tourism destinations in all of Asia. You know what's hilarious, David? I was talking to to our friend Kaiser, who lives in Mexico City, and he said one of the benefits of being an Asian guy in Mexico is that some people think he's Korean. So that's really funny that the whole Korean wave is actually kind of helping him in his social life. However, people are not trying to move to South Korea because I think it's very expensive. But anyways, we're going to get into the reasons and more comments. Please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pot Boys. First off, we got to say this, Andrew. Uh, we don't know. This was done by like a very generalized study. I'm going to go ahead and assume older Europeans were the people that were most surveyed. Possibly, if you made me I bet, I do not know. But if you made me bet money, I would imagine that's who took the survey. Mm, all right. But even regardless, David, are you surprised that Malaysia's number four on the list out of all the countries? Malaysia, not a bad place, but just like, uh, you just, I don't I, know. I, I think the reason why Malaysia's up there is because it's probably priced at a second world country level, but some of the medical care in places like Kuala Lumpur or Penang might be, and amenities that you could get might be moving more towards first world country Perhaps. level. No, I, I, that's a deal. Like, I think that people who are traveling want, like, bang for their buck. Yes, that's a good point. And I also think that's similar reasons to why the Philippines is up there. I'm not surprised Thailand's up there. Of course, people love going to Thailand. They love the lifestyle out there, and they love all the fun stuff, and also the work stuff, and the uh, Muay Thai and all that stuff. But I am surprised that Taiwan is up there, along with those countries, because those are Southeast Asian countries. And Taiwan, although it is an East Asian country, it kind of, I guess, has some, like, kind of Southeast Asian flair to it. Yeah, a little bit of Guamanian, Hawaiian vibes yeah, to it. Um, that's interesting. I, I think that it has some of the really nice advanced things that uh, like Japan and Korea has like ultra fast subway system, uh -huh. but it almost got the beachy beetle nut vibe, Dave. you know, eat some fruit on the beach. <laughs> yeah, you can surf out there. David, you want to know my theory? I think Taiwan ranks up there partially because I think all the Chinese expats or the Asian expats ranked it really high Yeah, because I know a bunch of American born Chinese or like Taiwanese Americans who moved back to Taiwan in the past five years, especially during COVID. And they've been there since. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Like Chinese dudes love Taiwan. Yeah, I see them move back a lot more than like HK people move back to Hong Kong. And I think it's funny this comment that said expat is just a dressed up way of saying European American people denying uh, deny being labeled as immigrants. But someone also then pointed out that guys, immigrants and expat are different terms because immigrant means that you're moving there permanently to continue the rest of your life versus an expat is actually just there mostly for work and could very well leave. Yeah. I mean, to me, man, it's very difficult to understand who was an expat. Is an English teacher in Asia an expat? Or is somebody who's like working at a multinational who's really high up and has like two MBAs is that also an expat? For sure, that's an expat, right? Yeah. Is and the I, English teacher an expat? It's unclear to me. Yeah, and I think there's expats from all different countries, although I think the image that we have is like an old European dude in, or white dude in like a Hawaiian shirt that, uh, you know, likes women of that country. <laughs> right. Um, here are the 10 worst countries for expats that were ranked in the survey. Like I said, this would not be my list. I, I'm kind of surprised by it. It goes Kuwait. Norway, Turkey, South Korea, Germany, South Africa, Italy, Malta, New Zealand, and Japan. All right, David, let's talk about what's really surprising us. South Korea and Japan are on the bottom 10 of the, you know, of the 10 worst countries, I guess, to move to as an expat. Why do we think that is concerning? These are such like big societies, big cities. And, and Asian clean. Americans, at least, and specifically Tokyo, they're, that's like one of the heaviest uh, heavily touristic countries in the entire world. These are the trendiest Asian countries, 
but how come expats don't like working there? Okay, all right. I think if they take cost of living and career opportunities into consideration, I could see those weighing heavily in Tokyo and Seoul because those would probably be the two cities you would move to if, as right, an right, expat. Right. And they have a really highly educated population that's ultra competitive. So you're going to get pushed out by either Korean Americans or Koreans that study abroad in the West or Japanese that study abroad in the West or in their local universities and, and come back to fill those high level positions. So right, it's not right, right. like you're immediately going to be looked to as any sort of authority, especially their work culture, specifically in Japan and Korea is ultra hierarchical. It's ultra cultural. Mm. You're not going to be familiar with any of those schematics and details or nuances. Yeah, it is true that if you don't speak Korean or Japanese and you're in those countries, it does make it quite hard. They're buying for that. Like, they're pretty strict about it. Like, they'll right. be like, oh, you're not speaking Japanese. Like, you should learn Japanese, you know, if you're going to live in Japan. Like, that's, like, kind of the attitude. Well, they have a very stri strong buy-in culture, and that's, like, one of the strengths of their yeah. society, but it also makes it difficult for outsiders to penetrate that, right? There was this comment from this guy who was like, dude, even Koreans are trying to leave South Korea right now because the cost of living um, and everything like that, the work culture is toxic, and, like, basically, if you're an expat, there is no fair fairness, justice, or legal protections. It doesn't matter how many years you've been there or how much you contribute. You are kind of basically treated like a long-term tourist. Yeah, I think it's changing I too. Know. I mean, I, I saw on the list, I believe China and Singapore ranked like near the middle, like mm -hmm. in the 20s, you know what I mean? But it really depends, man. Like ultimately, I think this list is highly variable and it would just vary so much on your stats. Like literally most people that are Asian American, Andrew, I'd say like 80%, if not 90%, they ultimately, if they move back to become an expat in Asia, they just go back to the country that their parents are from. Uh, not all the time. Like if you're from, you know, uh, Myanmar or something like that, Burma, you're probably not going to go back. But almost any other, you know what I mean? Like No, I mean, we even have a Cambodian. Like I have a bunch of Vietnamese friends that are back in Vietnam right now. Yeah, and we have a Cambodian friend that is visiting Cambodia right now. He's like, oh man, like my family's out here and if they wanted me to spend more time on the business. Yeah, like, he's I, like, they I, got a bunch of new malls in Cambodia. It's kind of lit. Somebody said, man, only move to Korea if you look like a K-pop star expat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, how much do you think that played into it too? Like if you're like a young, good looking, hip, person yeah. with like hip millennial slash Gen Z skills, maybe you should move to places where those more yeah. come into play, yeah. right? It's, it's This whole thing is like hyper individualistic. Yeah. And I could see Mexico being the answer for like a generalized answer, totally making sense. But maybe people who are like super scared shouldn't go there. You know what yeah, I mean? If like yeah. if you're very uh, easily spooked. I think it also depends. I mean, I think that sometimes the more like, I guess, uh, developed a big country is or like, you know, the bigger the cities are, in a way, the harder it is as an expat to get uh, embedded in it. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I could see, yeah, in Thailand, your money goes a little bit further. You know what I mean? But yeah. yeah, like I said, I have an Asian friend in Mexico. Like, man, he's enjoying himself. He likes it because, one, he feels American. Two, it's cheap. Three, the beaches and the city are safe, although there's other parts that you don't want to go to. And then he even said that he's not even Korean. He's Vietnamese. But he was like, yeah, like... I'm kind of getting the Korean bump out here because they love K-pop. Traveling Kaiser, check out his uh, Instagram. Yeah, Kai out in Mexico City. I, we got to go to CDMX, man. I've, I've just been eating at these CDMX restaurants, you know, all around America, too. Um, long story short, Andrew, what, what do these lists show? Do they, These lists do, I, I don't want to take, if they did the work to interview 12,000 people, I don't want to say no. it means nothing, but I just want to say this. Like, where you live in your life or what fish bowls or what squares on this gigantic, expansive game map of life you choose to live your life in, uh, it's highly situational and highly relative to your individual circumstances, right? Yeah. And it also, and here's a tip for anybody who's thinking about being like a digital nomad or working from home. Obviously, we have a number of friends who are doing that, so I talk to them sometimes. And it really depends on, like, what type of life you want to live, man? Like, if you want to go to a place where you have the best chance of meeting, like, I guess, like, more established people, I, it probably helps if you go there with some connections or you go to your motherland or you go where right. your family has connections. Like, for me, if I wanted to develop, I guess, high-level international business connections, I'd be probably looking at Shanghai right now. Yeah, or Hong Kong. Yeah, That's yeah. It. Because realistically, why, why am I, I'm not going to go to Japan and, 
yeah, I, I would just be in, the, I guess, the American expat crowd or the English-speaking Japanese crowd that was from America, but how high can I really expect to rise up that ladder, exactly. right? Exactly. If that's my goal. Exactly. And, you know, we, we have a number of Asian friends who are Asian and didn't choose to move relocate to Asia. And I said, yo, why why didn't you go to Asia? And, and why'd you go to, like, Latin America? Instead, and they were like, you know, honestly, for me, I'm so Americanized. I don't really feel Asian. I feel out of place when I'm there. So they're just like, I just operate as an American anywhere I go anyways. Right, right. Latin America has way more of the Western vibe yeah. to, to life. I mean, like Asia, specifically East Asia, is very Confucian. Yeah. I will tell you this. It is. I traveled uh -huh. all around East Asia. It's very yeah. Confucian. Yeah, there's a lot of rules, a lot yeah. of rules. And let me tell you this. We have a Mongolian friend, okay, who is out in Latin America right now. And you're like, oh, well, you seem to do well. You've got you family in Mongolia. Why would you go back to Mongolia? But... You know, like Mongolia is not maybe a place that everybody wants to move back to. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, to be honest, it maybe it just doesn't Well, it happen. really depends on your connections, too. I mean, maybe you would like it if you had enough, you know, you were plugged into that circle and yeah. that's what you were trying to do. Yeah. Well, I think overall, David, any last takeaways? I mean, hopefully this video was helpful for anybody who's thought about traveling to these countries. First of all, I think all these countries are nice to travel to. I am surprised New Zealand, such a nice Western country, one of the five aisles of, of England is is so low on the list, but I don't know. Maybe that's because of cost of living and, and job opportunities. And maybe I think it's boring. I think a lot of people from New Zealand, they even moved to Australia to get like a bigger city vibe, you uh, know, more global. Um, I'd say this, man, it really depends if, as an American, do you want to network with other American expats? At what level do you want to talk to locals? international global citizens third culture kids do you feel energized do you feel like you're a different person like mm. you could feel like a different person in this country or this city than another place yeah and if that place activates a side of you that you and you want to stay in that pocket at least for that phase of your life just know that that that's okay and make your decision based off that and you just kind of got to know like what kind of like phase of life you're in, you know? Like I know some Canadians, they move to America and they don't necessarily like how aggressive everybody is, but their salary is like 50 to 200% higher. So they're just doing it to stack enough money so they can go back to Canada and easily buy property. Hey, depends on all your reasons, how long you want to stay, how you identify, right? Yeah. And where your connections are. So anyways, guys, uh, hopefully that was helpful. Let us know in the comments down below what you think about this list. Are you working abroad? Have you visited any of these countries recently? What do you guys think? And, uh, and how much do you think it just has to do with how much people embrace you? You know, I, there's this chart, Andrew. Uh, people can either tolerate you, they can accept you, or they can embrace you. And I would hope that... Um, Everybody at least finds those pockets, whether here locally or internationally, where they can feel embraced. Oh. Because that's go, a good life. It's a go, better life. Hey, oh, you're going to have a good life if you feel embraced. It's true. It's true. Yeah. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for watching the Hot Pop Boys. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.